Hey everybody, in this video we're going to talk about the CSS position property. In particular, we're going to be looking at position static, position relative, position fixed, and position absolute. Now with this CSS position property, you can really take your layout skills to a whole nother level. You can do things like offsetting elements and overlapping elements, creating fixed footers and fixed nav bars, and much, much more. So if this is something that sounds interesting to you, let's get started. So we're going to start off here with position static. And let me just say that besides the positions which I mentioned in the intro, like relative, absolute, fixed, and static, there's also a position sticky. And I'm going to save that one for its own special video. So what I have going on so far is I have this simple index.html file here with some boilerplate HTML. As you can see in line 7 here, I'm linking to an external style sheet, which is styles.css, which you can see here on the right. And right now I've just set everything, I've used the universal selector here to set everything to have a margin of zero because I don't want any default margin stylings to get in the way of what I'm gonna explain. So now in my index.html file, you can see here in the body, I have these h1, h2, and h3 tags with some text in them, one, two, and three. Let's go ahead and see what we have in the browser so far. So here, as you can see, we have the text from the h1, the h2, and the h3. Now, what you might not know is that already each one of these elements has a default position value and that default position value is position static. And what that means is that each of these elements is going to be arranged in the normal document flow. So what do I mean by normal document flow? Well, to put it simply in the index.html file, the way that these elements are arranged, like the H1 at the top, H2 here in the middle, and then H3, Simply by laying out the elements in this way, I'm defining the position that I want them to be in, in the DOM. So of course, if I was to put the H2 first, and then I saved, and then I went back to the browser, now as you might expect, we have two, or the H2 coming first, and then the H1, and then the H3. But let's put that H2 back where it was. Now, the other thing that I want to make sure that you understand is that if, again, we look at the browser, we see one, two, and three here, if you're not experienced with HTML and CSS, you might think that the element's width is kind of just here. But let's go to our CSS file and let's select those elements, the H1, H2, and H3. And let's put a border around each of these elements. And now let's look in the browser. And here you can see actually that each of these elements spans the full width of the browser or the viewport. So when we're dealing with block elements, as we have here with these H1, H2, and H3 headers, they're all falling in line with the normal document flow. Since the H1 takes up the full width of the viewport, the next one, the H2, starts here, and then the H3, and so on. If we were to add more elements here that are block-level elements, like a paragraph tag or a div, for example, those would behave in the same way. And the reason that I'm pointing this out, even though I know it's very simple, is because I want to set this up to provide a contrast with the other position values which we're going to get into. What we've seen so far is position static. We talked about how elements, by default, get position static meaning that elements are organized according to the normal document flow. Now, let me ask you a question here. Let's say that this second element here, the H2, with the text content of the word 2, let's say that we wanted to move that element down, let's say, by 10 pixels. Well, how would we normally do this? Well, one way I could do it is I could come in here into my styles.css file. I can select that H2, and then maybe I can give it a margin top, of 10 pixels, and let's check it out in the browser. And here you can see now that the two has moved down from where it was. You can see there's a little gap here. It's moved down 10 pixels. But the thing is the three, the H3 here, has moved down as well. Because remember, these elements, these block level elements here, are all in the document flow. So sort of like gravity, when we increase the margin here and this moves down, it kind of pushes the three down as well. But what if rather than pushing this three down, we simply wanted this element, this H2, to move down? We don't want the three to move at all. Well, this is where position relative comes in. So let's come back to our CSS file. And instead of doing this margin top 10 pixels, let's give the H2 a position relative. Now that we have this element with a position relative, we open up the ability to access four new properties. We have the ability to set a top, a right, a bottom, and a left coordinate. And what these properties do is they allow us to 
offset the element from where it would be normally in the document flow. And that's a big word that I want you to keep in mind, offset. That's basically what position relative allows you to do. So it keeps the element in normal document flow, but now we have access to a top, a right, a bottom, and a left property, which allow us to offset the element from the position that it would normally be in. And in this way, you can think of an element with position relative as basically like being position static, but supercharged. Because remember, position static, it doesn't affect the document flow, and position relative doesn't affect the document flow. However, it now gives us access to these four new properties, which allow us to play around with the position of the element. So then, let's go ahead and play around with position relative. At the moment, since I just applied position relative, and I didn't apply any top, right, bottom, or left properties, if we look at the browser, we can see that everything appears in normal document flow, basically as if each one has position static. But now if I come over to my H2 element, which has position relative, and let's say I give it a top of 10 pixels, and we go back to the browser, well now we can see that this H2 here, with the text content of 2, has moved down 10 pixels, and you can see that it's kind of overlapping the H3 here. Whereas before, when I just applied margin, the 3 actually got pushed down as well. Let's try to make this a little clearer. Let's take away those borders, so we don't see all those lines anymore. And on the H2, let's give it a background color. We'll make it a light gray. And now let's take a look at it. And here maybe it's a little bit clearer now. You can see that the H2 element here with this background gray has been moved down or offset 10 pixels from where it would normally be and is overlapping the H3. Let's also try giving it a left property. Let's say left 100 pixels. And now let's check it out. And here you can see that the H2 has moved 100 pixels away from the left. And that's important to keep in mind. When we say top, right, bottom, or left, what we're talking about is moving away from the left or away from the right. So 100 pixels left is 100 pixels away from the left. Cool, so, so far we've gotten into position static, the default basically, and position relative, which is like position static, but a supercharged version of position static and which opens up those four position properties, the top, right, bottom, and left, and allows us to offset the elements. Now we can move into our third position value, and that's going to be position absolute. So to talk about position absolute, let's get rid of this stuff here. Let's get rid of the position relative and the top and left properties. Let's save it. We'll just keep the background color so we can see our H2 element pretty clearly. And this is what we have basically back to position static for all three of these elements. Before we get into the details of position absolute, let's just apply position absolute to the H2 element. And now even without giving any top, right, bottom, or left properties, let's save it and see what happens. But check that out. Now we see the H1 here, 1, and we see the H2, 2. Remember this H2 is the one that has the position absolute. But what happened to that H3 with the text content of 3? Well, if you look here underneath the 2, you can kind of see a little bit of that 3 here. And essentially what's happened is that the H2 here that we've given position absolute has been taken out of document flow. And that's a key thing to remember with position absolute. When we give something position absolute, unlike position static and position relative, the element is taken out of the normal document flow. So that H3 element, it's still there, but since the H2 was taken out of normal document flow, the H3 is basically moved up to come under the H1. Actually, let's get rid of that background gray color, and I think we'll be able to see things a little bit easier. Now we can see a little bit that the 3 here is underneath the 2. So looking at the HTML file here, because the H2 has been given the position absolute, as far as the H1 and the H3 are concerned, it's almost like the H2 doesn't even exist. All right, so if we just had this, like H1 and H3, this is what we would have, the 1 and the 3, H1 and the H3. When we saw that H2, when it was given the position absolute, it was overlapping the 3. 
If we look at this dictionary definition here of the word absolute, we see here where it says viewed or existing independently and not in relation to other things, not relative or comparative. So perhaps the term absolute positioning is coming from the fact that the element is no longer in relationship to the document flow. As I said before, once we start giving these position values of relative and fixed and absolute, we open up these top, right, bottom, and left coordinates. And so now with position absolute, we have access to these. But how do they work exactly with position absolute? And what I'm about to talk about here is a very important aspect of position absolute. So let's bring back or uncomment out the H2 that we had before. We'll bring back the light gray background color for the H2 as well. And just for reference sake again, let's look in the browser and we see the two, which is absolutely positioned here, taken out of normal document flow, which is causing the H3, which you can see poking out here a little bit, to come up in the document flow. So that's where we're at at the moment. So let's go ahead and start applying some position coordinates. What would happen if I gave a top position coordinate of zero pixels? Where do you think the element would go, or would it stay in the same place? Well, let's go back and check it out. Well, check out what happened now. The 2, the H2, has actually moved to the top of the viewport here. What if we gave it not only a top of zero pixels, but we gave it a right of zero pixels? And remember again, here we're saying zero pixels away from the right, which means that it should be exactly at the right. So let's save, and now let's go back to the browser and see where we're at. We'll take a look at that. Now the H2 element is all the way here on the right. So we're at top zero pixels, right zero pixels. So what you can see is that the top right, left, and bottom, they're being positioned in relationship to the HTML document. And this is the way that position absolute works unless there's an element, a parent element of the element that has a position set to a value other than static. So let me show you what I mean by that. Let's say that this h1, h2, and h3 were actually wrapped in a div, and we'll give that div a class of container. Right, so now we have these three header elements in a div with a class container. So let's go ahead, and in our CSS, let's create a rule for that container class, and let's give it a position of relative. Let's also give it a border, so we can see that containing element, and then let's give it a margin, margin top, 100 pixels from the top. Now let's go ahead and check out the browser. So check out what's happened now. Again, we can see that h2 element, remember this h2 element here, has position absolute. However, now it's wrapped up or enclosed by this container div, which you can see here with its border. And because this container div has a position with a value set to something other than static, in this case it's set to position relative, the top and right properties that we gave to this h2 element are now in reference to this container div, not the entire HTML document. So here we can see one of the ways that position absolute can be useful. When we want to position an element inside of a parent element in a particular place. So like for example, if we came back to our styles.css, and let's say that we gave the container a width of, let's say, 50%. All right, so now let's check it out. And now you can see that this container is 50% of the browser window. And that absolutely positioned element, which is positioned inside of this container div, is positioned exactly at the top zero, right zero coordinates. And if we go ahead and shrink the browser, well, check it out. It moves right along at the same position inside of that container div. Now at first you might think that it's kind of strange to give the parent or container a position relative. But when you think about it, if you give something position relative, as long as you don't give it a top right, bottom, or left coordinate, it's essentially behaving like a position static element. So you'll very often see this pattern of a child element with position absolute and a parent element with a position relative. Because this allows the child element to be positioned at a specific place inside of the parent. And now we get to position fixed. Position fixed is similar to position absolute in the sense that the element is removed from the normal document flow. However, there are two critical differences. 
The first is that an element with position fixed is fixed in relationship to the viewport. And the second is that an element with position fixed doesn't move with scrolling. So let's look at those in a little bit more detail now. So what we talked about previously was this h2 element here with a position absolute contained within this div with a class container and we gave that container class a position relative. And we said that that absolutely positioned element, which was this here, this h2, would be positioned in relationship to its enclosing parent div because that parent div had a position relative applied. So to see the effect that position fixed has, let's just apply position fixed to that h2 instead of position absolute. And remember, we had applied top zero pixels, right zero pixels. Now if we go back to the browser, this is what we see. We see the h2 up here. Remember, before it was here. But now because we've applied position fixed, our coordinates, the zero pixel top and the zero pixel right, are in relationship to the viewport. So again, that's one of the big differences between position fixed and position absolute. Now let's look at the scrolling aspect of it. So in order to do that, we'll need to create some more content in our HTML so that we can get a scroll bar. So let's create a P tag and we'll give it some lorem ipsum here. We'll give it a whole bunch. And let's go back to the browser now. And we should see we have this ability to scroll now. And what I want you to take notice of is this H2 here with position fixed. Notice how when we scroll, it stays fixed in the same location in the viewport, the top right corner. One caveat that I'll point out, which is something that we can read about in the MDM web docs for position fixed, is that when the element with position fixed has an ancestor which has a transform perspective or filter property set to something other than none, the fixed element will no longer stay fixed. That is, it will scroll. So I don't think it's something that you'll encounter very often, but I figured it was worth pointing out. One of the most common use cases for position fix is when creating something like a nav bar, where you want the user to be able to scroll down the page, but you also want to have the nav bar fixed to the top of the screen so it remains in view. And you can see an example of that here on YouTube, where they have this nav bar staying fixed in place while the rest of the content can be scrolled. Oh yeah, and one more interesting thing about position fixed, and actually about position absolute as well, is that I can have an element stretch from top to bottom or left to right, simply by using the position coordinates. So let me show you what I mean by that. Here we have this H2 with position fixed as we saw. Remember it's this element here with the light gray background color. And let's say that we wanted to have this look something like a nav bar where we wanted this entire gray background to stretch from the left to the right of the viewport. Well in this case we already have the top at zero, the right at zero. If we go ahead and we set the left coordinate to zero pixels, well now check out what happens. That element spans the entire width of the viewport. So just by using these position coordinates, we can give an element height or width when we're using position fixed or position absolute. So thanks for checking out this video all about CSS positioning. Hopefully now you have some new tools in your CSS toolkit that you can use when you're laying out your own websites. If you feel like you got some value out of this video, please give it a like, drop a comment down below, and consider subscribing to the channel. See you next time.